Hi folks, this is Bubba Roundtree Outdoors. I'm your host, Wade Rush. Got something a little different going on here. We've, it's been in, uh, in the works for several weeks now. Rachel and I have been kind of working on the history that my dad has kept back since 1966. I believe that's where it started. And he would keep a photo journal of the deer that were taken each year, even up to the present now. Bubba Roundtree Outdoors officially started on YouTube about 2012. We're going to finally work our way up to that point, but you all recognize this gentleman that's sitting here with me. This is Captain Buster Rush, Rush Fishing Guide Service, and he's my dad. I'm the oldest of three children that uh, you'll see in these series. Is, there's me, um, my brother Russell, and my sister Sherry, and we all took our first deer back in the 70s. And uh, like I said, dad started with this hunting with hounds and hunting with the hunting clubs back in 1966, so I'm going to let him tell you a little bit about how it got started. And uh, how did you get involved with uh, with the sport of hunting with hounds and hunting with clubs? Well, I was raised hunting quail. We didn't have any deer around here. I was raised hunting quail, and so I was already used to working with dogs because uh, we had bird dogs. I remember that. Yeah, and um, the first one to ever carry me deer hunting with dogs was uh, Kenny Lominac. He ended up being the game warden. Yeah, he was a yeah, he was a retired DNR officer yeah, here. That's right. Yeah. And we didn't have any deer around here and we had to go all the way down to Walterboro. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just a teenager and uh, I never did kill a deer the first few times I went down there. Then Coach Hutch Hutchinson had a sportsman club there at uh, Camden High School and I think I was a junior. Uh, he uh, carried us down in the swamp down there below Poinsett State Park, and we was on a dog yeah. hunt. And uh, in fact, I had to borrow a shotgun because all I had was a double barrel 16 gauge, and I borrowed a, a Browning A5 from a friend of mine, and uh, they ran a doe by me. That thing was falling the jack boy, and I rolled that sucker, and I mean, it just thrilled So you me. killed your first deer on basically the first time you went on a, on a hunt like that then? Mm. No, I had been going to Walterboro, but I just didn't get a chance to shoot. You know? So you were hooked after that? After that, I was hooked. <laughs> well, we grew up in it. I, I can still remember as a kid the deer coming home, uh, and we uh, we all looked forward to it. And I remember you started taking us in the woods when we were six, seven years old. Exactly. We started going with you. We weren't carrying a gun, but but we were going and, and got to experience it. And, and the way I remember it is as the hunting... Uh, progressed, the hunting club progressed on up, it became, every Saturday was basically a family event it whenever was. we would get together at the club. There were, my men brought their wives, their kids, and we'd, uh, we'd all cook up a big dinner while we were there for, uh, to, to eat whenever, uh, during the break. And, uh, and that's the way I remember it. The Savannah River Nuclear Site, you're going to see a lot of pictures, a lot of big bucks that were taken on the uh, Savannah River Site. And uh, how did you get started down there? Well, they started the hunts, I think it was in 67, and I didn't, it might have been 66 when they first started. The first pictures I think we saw in here was 67, whenever okay. we started seeing bugs and, uh, coming home we, from Me and Bone Hamlin started going the second year they had them. Bubba Powers went the first year, and he told us about it. So we, we started on the second year, and the first hunt I ever went on down there, I'd never seen anything like that mm -hmm. in all my life. There was dog trucks and and, and standers and uh, uh, they said now the way we're gonna turn the dogs loose they said whenever we feel like everybody's ready I'm gonna blow my truck horn right. and they said the closest truck to me you blow your horn and then just pass it on down the line and uh, I got out I was on a railroad track me and Bone and uh, he turned the dogs loose well let me get back whenever I heard that horn blow. I'll never forget it. It started echoing, just bond, and then the next and the next and then I sit down on our horn, and it went right on down, and the whole swamp uh -huh. was just horns blowing. <laughs> and, uh, and I had looked to my right, and there was a stander down there. He was about 200, 250 yards from me on this railroad track. Had a brand new hunting outfit on. I said, he don't look like he's very experienced. <laughs> So I looked Not with you raggedy left. dress rascal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I looked at my left, there's another with brand new outfit and all on. 
I said, boy, that buckshot show go a long way down this railroad track. So I, I got, I sit down to start with, and they could still see my head. I ended up laying down <laughs> for a while. But when they turned them dogs loose, back then, everybody carried just cracker mm -hmm. jack deer dogs. And uh, them things started running, and this pack jumped, and it picked up this pack, and that picked up that pack, and pretty soon they probably had, they probably had a hundred hounds running that one deer. And the whole swamp was just echoing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I knew where Bone was about because he'd gone straight out. And I heard it shooting. And uh, he shot an old Model 12, and it had seven mm -hmm. loads of buckshot in it. And I heard seven shots go off. I said, that was Bone Hammer Show with the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know you got a picture of it on that oh, yeah. thing, that big six that big, point. That big monster six I point. I said, yeah. my God, i never seen anything <laughs> like that. And I was hooked on Savannah River then. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, that kind of gives you a brief history of what we're talking about here. What you're fixing to watch is part one. We went from 1966 to 1989. You're going to see a lot of first deer taken, loads of big, big bucks in here. The pictures had to move along fast. We had to get through hundreds of pictures. So if there's anything you want to pause on to take a longer look at it, just hit your pause button and sit and look at it as long as you want to. Wade Rush above Bubba Tree Outdoors with Captain Buster. This is going to be part one. Hope you enjoyed the video. Bye-bye.
man just say? Boss man just say go with you, so I'm going with you. I ain't scared to take Buster stand. You, you <laughs> might ought to be. <laughs> I don't think you'll be able to do that since he's here today. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> I can run faster than him. I just don't think I can outrun his buddies he's going to have coming behind. <laughs> all right, we're ready to roll. Yeah, bud.
right, folks, we're heading to the Phelps track. It is 25th of October. 26th of October, Saturday. Yeah. I wrote the 25th enough last night. Uh, 26th of October, it is either sex day. Captain Buster got some shots at the second meeting place this morning. It was just too cotton picking dark. The first one, we like the froze to death. <laughs> yeah, you see, uh, well, the temp is saying 32, but it's gonna probably drop down to about 31 here in just a little bit. It's somewhere holding between 30 and 31. It's cold out there in Central South Carolina. All right, guys, we'll get right back to you when are we getting ready to turn them loose. Damn!
Come at you, James. Come by you, James. No, two of them run right out here in front of me, but I couldn't shoot because they, you know, I'd have been shooting right toward y'all, and I was hollering for James. I, they come around me and went on down there where James was. The 1989 season begins on September 15, 1989. Charlie Davenport takes a nice eight point on opening weekend. But there is a monster looming off the coast of South Carolina and it's making its way toward our hometown here in Camden. On September 21st, Hurricane Hugo makes landfall at Charleston and grinds its way through the Midlands and we here in Camden take a direct hit. It is a small compact storm and it does not lose its strength after it makes landfall. We here live just southeast of Camden and the eye wall passes right over us. It's a devastating storm. Hugo cuts a 30 mile wide path of destruction through the Midlands of South Carolina and all the way into North Carolina. Thirty-five loblolly pines came down in my yard alone, and I took my family down to my mama's house because Captain Buster was stuck on shift at DuPont, and we rode out the storm down in mama's. This was the view from the backyard looking down towards the shed and the dog pens. Dad called me that morning and said, Wade, you need to go down there and check and see how many dogs we've lost. 
It took Joanne and I 45 minutes to climb over the deadfall to find out that not one dog was killed or injured. The dog pens were all destroyed. The dogs were still sitting in their uh, in their pens down there, though they were destroyed. The dogs were still wandering around. None of them had run off. They were just happy to see somebody when we got down there. It was just totally destroyed. like right here on both sides 521 highway going through downtown Camden the water was coming over the top of the road Too far. I hope you got all that missing on video. Oh yeah. <laughs> Where'd it come down that road? Yeah, you see the those first one came out about in. 20 yards up from it. I shot at them. They tore like the dickens going that, go way. that, went that mm -hmm. way. And then I went down there to go look, and I got about halfway back to here, and then two more run down the road, and I shot at them, and they cut went right by there and went that way. Yeah. Bad boy. Josh Brandon was down past number three at that intersection. They crossed that middle road that he was shooting at. We get to watch it this all on video. Yeah. What did they say, Parker? 